Yes, these are all NVIDIA 3000 series and AMD 6000 series GPUs. And yes, I'm gonna teach you how you can successfully buy one, but not in this video. This is the first in a three-part series on GPUs that I'm releasing over three days. I started off working on this as a single video, but it ended up being just way too long, so I split it into two, and it was still too long, so I split it into three. Kind of like the Peter Jackson doing Lord of the Rings trilogy of GPUs going on here. That's actually a perfect analogy because every single one of us is going full Smeagol trying to get a graphics card right now. So here in part one, we're gonna talk about why we are where we are with GPUs right now. What market forces led us down this dark path where A, you just can't find any in stock and B, why they're selling for ridiculous prices both on the scalper tier and even retail. But what about second breakfast? In part two, I'm gonna go over how I managed to buy all of these, go over the tools that I use, and give you all the tricks in the book that I employed to buy all these so you can maximize your own chances of getting a graphics card at MSRP. Then in part three, The Return of the King, we'll talk about some ways that you can still use your computer even if you haven't been able to get a graphics card, even to game on. I'll share a little $15 gadget that, with some effort, will let you get some 1080p gameplay in. So right now, in this, the first of a three-part series on GPUs, we're gonna cover why things are so expensive, why GPUs are now all of a sudden being sold as ridiculous bundles with other products, and talk about just how bad this problem actually is and how long it might last. It's Christian Wheel, let's roll. If you've been shopping for PC parts in 2021, you've probably noticed that graphics cards are just, for the most part, unavailable, unless you want to pay exorbitant prices to scalpers. So let's talk about how the industry got to this point. You know, I've seen a lot of misinformation and rampant speculation and even some baseless accusations against retailers and manufacturers that are just wrong, you internet trolls, you. Now, everything we're about to talk about is cobbled together from multiple sources, including conversations with retailers, their distributors, industry sources, a few common sense observations, my own experience in the industry, and as always, the prescience of a fortune cookie I got this one time. The actual crux of the problem boils down to the most fundamental principle of pricing in economics, supply and demand. Just in case you weren't paying attention in high school econ, the way things are supposed to work is that supply and demand meet in the middle, and the point at which they intersect is the market price. As demand goes up, so does price. Price also goes up as supply goes down. And right now, we have a rather unfortunate set of circumstances where demand is up and supply is down. And that's only getting worse the longer it goes on. Kind of like watching Elon Musk on SNL. As for the specific things that cause the weird state that the industry is in, as with most unprecedented things nowadays, it began with the pandemic. COVID-19 hit China hard in the winter of 2019 and the early months of 2020, to the point where entire regions were shut down. Manufacturing and logistics came to a screeching halt while the country worked to contain the spread of disease. Elsewhere in the world, we didn't really feel the effects of that manufacturing shutdown right away because most supply chains keep a reserve amount of product warehoused domestically to prepare for China's expected annual Spring Festival shutdown during the month of February. But once COVID-19 started causing shutdowns in the U.S. and a lot of us switched to a work-from-home or a school-from-home system, demand for technology shot up as everyone rushed to upgrade their aging home PCs. There was also a renewed interest in gaming and streaming because a lot of people just now had a lot of time on their hands and they couldn't really leave the house. So that supply buffer was burned through pretty quickly, leaving a lack of supply with increased demand and not enough new product to fill it. And that was even before the new generations of graphics cards were launched, driving up pent up demand even further and setting the stage for the demand issues that remain today. Logistics, that is the bulk shipping from the factories in China to retailers around the world, was also heavily affected. By the summer of 2020, the US depleted all those reserves of imported product and manufacturers in China tried to increase their output in an attempt to meet our demand. But even if more product is being made, it all needs to be shipped here. 
And unfortunately, the number of ships, shipping containers, and planes to distribute products hadn't changed, making the cost of each cubic foot of space on one of those ships or planes even more in demand and even more expensive. That translated into a combination of lower shipping speeds and higher shipping costs that quickly got passed along to consumers in the way of higher prices and longer waits between restocks. Even today, right now, as we speak, there are an average of 30 huge barges filled with cargo waiting to come into the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, which, by the way, handle about a third of the country's imports. Normally, there's only one or two ships in the queue, so they're way behind right now. Some manufacturers even abandoned shipping by sea altogether due to the delays, and these manufacturers ended up switching to air shipping, which results in significantly higher costs, again, passed along to consumers in the way of increased MSRPs. And these are just some of the logistics problems we've faced in the past year. I don't know if you noticed, but the Suez Canal was blocked for a week. What can you even say about that? Ship happens. <laughs> Meanwhile, the costs of manufacturing have also gone up. Companies have had to change their processes to keep their workers safe and socially distanced in every step of the process, from mining the raw materials to assembly to packaging. And on top of that, manufacturers are facing the same shipping problems to get the parts that they need from their suppliers. And then there's the chip shortage. Taiwan, whose fabs provide 65% of all the chips in the world, has been hit with its most severe drought in half a century, impacting their ability to fabricate silicon and manufacture other intermediate items. Just imagine, you buy a box of Chips Ahoy, and thanks to the chip shortage, now it's just Ahoy. <laughs> On the subject of chips, specifically as it pertains to NVIDIA, ASUS co-CEO S.Y. Shu said that NVIDIA has been shipping fewer GPUs, meaning ASUS and other AIB partners' 3000 series card output is limited. We currently speculate the yield from the upstream supplier hasn't been smooth. That's led to such a big shortage. By the way, that upstream supplier... It's probably Samsung, who makes all the 3000 series GPUs. And during that same event, Xu said that ASUS will raise graphics card prices even more than they already have, due to the ongoing shortage of supplies to make them. Other AIB partners are raising their prices too, although some seem to be doing it more than others. MSI. <coughs> oh, that was weird. Then there's also the tariffs to contend with. In 2019, the Trump administration added a 25% duty to electronic components coming in from China. But after a huge uproar from a bunch of businesses, they added a temporary exemption to graphics cards, motherboards, cases, and power supplies over 500 watts. Now, all of those exemptions expired back on January 1st of this year. So just to get something into the country costs more in 2021. Let's talk about mining next. Various cryptocurrencies are experiencing unprecedented booms in value right now, and thus it's more profitable than ever to use GPUs to mine them. Now, if you're totally unaware about how crypto works, there are basically really complicated math problems that GPUs are great at solving. And every time one of those math problems gets solved, it creates a new unit of crypto, like a dollar or an ether in the case of Ethereum. But because crypto is so profitable right now, miners are trying to get their hands on as many graphics cards as they can to add them to their mining rigs. There are definitely issues with cryptocurrency. The environmental impact can be pretty steep. And during a supply shortage, it definitely doesn't win favor with gamers to see folks who have much deeper pockets willing to outbid others on large quantities of GPUs when most consumers just want one only then to turn around and dump those GPUs onto the used market when more efficient cards are released or crypto values decline below the threshold of mining profitability. I get that, I really do. But I'm not here to villainize miners. I don't think they are the problem in this situation because they too are struggling to get cards. They're in line with the rest of us. Scalpers, on the other hand, are a big part of this crisis. Now, this is a problem that we've seen in the world of sneakerheads and concert ticket sales for years, and unfortunately, now it's spread to electronics. Scalpers have bots, and those bots sit around all day and watch retailers' websites. Then the moment a product is restocked, the bots jump in and place an order faster than any human could, and the scalper has effectively removed those units from the supply to help drive the price up. 
As of filming, thanks to the scalper economy, when you look at sites like StockX or eBay, you can see GPUs commonly going for anywhere from two to three times their MSRP, which of course, the MSRP is already inflated due to everything we just talked about. Interestingly enough, Intel actually figured out how to beat the scalpers. They unleashed their new anti-scalper tech with the launch of the 11900K. It's actually pretty simple. You just make something that nobody wants. Don't kill me, Intel fanboys. I actually like Intel a lot. So that's basically it. We have higher demand than ever before. Pandemic demand that NVIDIA and AMD never could have predicted when they were setting up their fabs. Plus, manufacturing issues at those fabs, resulting in not enough silicon to meet demand. You've got logistics problems slowing down what supply there is. Then the rise of scalpers buying up every card they can get their hands on, which reduces the supply even further. And here you are, stuck as a victim of this fluke of economics, just wanting to play World of Warships because you like big boats and you cannot lie. As for how long things will be this way, well, you gotta understand that AMD and Nvidia, they don't like there being shortages like this. They make more money when they sell more GPUs. But right now, they're selling every unit they can crank out. The problem is, scaling up production takes months or years of planning, and all that planning can be for nothing if there are issues getting raw materials or unexpected spikes in demand, like, say, from a pandemic. So our best guesstimate as to how long this shortage will last is at least until quarter four of 2021, maybe even into 2022. Now, I just made fun of Intel for their Rocket Lake desktop CPUs, but they are about to enter the fray into GPUs too. They're gonna launch the DG2 and the XE HPG discrete GPUs. They say in late 2021. I mean, they also said mid 2020, but that didn't happen. So just a reminder, you should always take release dates with a grain of salt. Now, we don't know how well Intel's GPUs are going to perform, but if they can hold their own, they might help alleviate some of the supply issues. We can only hope at this point. There's just nothing else we can do. Or is there? Remember, this is the first part of a three-part series on GPUs. In part two, we'll reveal all the ways that I've been able to buy nearly 30 latest gen GPUs since this shortage started. I bought them all by hand, no auto buying bots, and I paid MSRP. And you can do it too. And we'll go over how in the next video. Then in part three, we'll talk about some ways to mitigate your lack of a GPU if you just haven't been able to get one. And we'll talk about some ways that you can still do some PC gaming even without a graphics card. Everything from integrated graphics to other. Subscribe to the channel to catch those. Hit the bell if you want to be notified as soon as new videos go live. And please give this video a like if you found it entertaining or informational. I know the subject matter is kind of bleak. We're all just trying to understand it and we're sick of it. But sound off in the comments. How long have you been trying to get a GPU? Or maybe did you manage to get one? And if so, how? Anyway, my name is Christian Wheel. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.